Welcome to In Focus. In this episode, we learn from the renowned climate scientist, Professor Sheldon Huber, about the current state of the planet and how we can help. We are almost about to lose control about a damage which is beyond any imagination. If all the ice would melt, something that would happen when we go to three, four, five degrees warming, that will add actually 50 meter to sea level. If we want to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees, remember we have already at least 1.1 degree, so we are only a small margin away from this magic Paris line, then we would have to reduce global emissions every year from now on by 7%. I mean, this is a tall order by 7%. We have calculated how much all the measures involved in the COVID-19 pandemic sort of action plans have reduced global emissions in the first half of, of the year 2020. Yeah? Minus 8.8% of CO2 emissions. Uh, but don't forget, we had almost complete lockdown in certain countries. Uh, uh, aviation has dropped by 95% at least, and so on. Uh, tourism has broken down. It's only produced minus 8.8% of CO2 emissions. Uh, keeping global warming below 1.5 degrees is virtually impossible now. Uh, this is very sad. We will lose, for example, all the tropical coral reefs with uh, warming more than 1.5 degrees. Two degrees is still in reach. Probability, I would say, 10 to 20 percent, something like that. Now you see, reducing emissions every year by 7 percent. I mean, this is almost unthinkable. On the other hand, we have all the technology and all the money to do it. What should I focus on in my private life to be as climate friendly as possible? I mean, 20 years ago, I would have thought this is a stupid question. It's completely unpolitical and so on. Now I think it's a very valid question. It's easy to, to get green electricity. Yeah? You can, of course, use the train instead of the plane. You can avoid to buy fast fashion switching away from beef at least, and so on. So there are many things, but the most important thing is as a, as a consumer, as a customer, I mean, you are part of the crowd that defines demand. Eh? I mean, the biggest companies will be down on their knees if the customers run away, eh? and in particular, if the reputation is gone. So. So business people tell me that 50% of the profit is made by reputation, for example. So if you have a company which is either involved in child's work, avoiding taxes or destroying the planet, in the end you will be punished by the customer. What is the most important factor driving global warming? Uh, is it air traveling? Is it steel industry? Whatever is it? Uh, and actually, it turns out when you look precisely that it's the built environment. So 40% of all emissions, direct or indirect, come from building, houses, skyscrapers, infrastructures, and operating them. The worst is actually the concrete production, because there you have tremendous amounts of fossil fuels, which you need for heating and creating uh, iron steel and so on, and of course there are chemical reactions which are directly involved. But there is a solution, we could switch in construction from steel and concrete to wood. If you grow a tree and cut it down and use it for timber in order to build a house, the CO2 which is sucked up by the tree during its growth by photosynthesis is then sequestered for centuries, actually. And instead of just leaving the, the pitch, you would grow a new tree. So you create a carbon pump that is actually extracting continuously carbon from the atmosphere. And by the way, we have now so modern methods to use wood, timber, it can be earthquake safe, it can be fire safe, and so on. You simply improve 
the natural conditions by planting a forest. So you bring back biodiversity, you bring back water, and this is a win-win situation. If there is a silver bullet, then it's that. And so the dream is, the vision is to combine uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, digitalization with organic construction. Why not thinking about the autonomous house, the autonomous skyscraper, the autonomous train station and so on, which is operating itself according to the highest energy efficiency standards, but it's built from organic material. So if we would really rethink how we construct buildings and how we operate them, this would actually win us the climate war. I'm absolutely convinced. Thank you.